We've known for a while that Serif has been working on Affinity Designer for the iPad. We haven't heard much lately, but now there is a leaked video on YouTube that shows a demo and a lot of features working. It looks pretty far along. The video has some nice soothing music to it, but uh, nobody's explaining what we're actually looking at. That doesn't matter to me. Just by looking at the video, you can pull a lot of information out of it and get a good idea of what kind of program they're looking to deliver. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video is picking apart that demo and looking at some of the uh, features, the nitty gritty, and what kind of things we can expect when this thing is released. And if you want to check out the original video, go ahead and check out the description. I'm going to link it up down there. Now, the one thing that we do not know is the release date. I don't think we're going to uh, see it anytime in the next few weeks or next few months. This beta is private, hasn't been released to the public yet. I'm guessing if, if they're going to release it this year, they're probably going to be showing it off at WWDC like they did with Affinity Photo, their photo manipulation app last year. Just kind of makes sense. One, Apple really wants more pro caliber apps on the iPad just like this one. So showcasing it to a large audience is in Apple's interest and it's in Serif's interest to get as much publicity as they can before this thing releases. Anyway, and Enough with speculating about when it's gonna come out, let's go ahead and dive into the video and the details themselves. Like Affinity Photo Designer looks to be packing as much of the desktop app into the iPad app. You can see the file management stuff up here in the corner, and then over next to it we have the persona selection. That basically lets you go from raster graphics to vector graphics to their export stuff. It's one of the better parts of Affinity Designer is that it is kind of like two apps in one. It's really built for drawing. That third icon there is probably the export persona. The icon looks a little bit different here so maybe it's something different but maybe it's not later in the video they show some export options in the like side pullout menu they show some vector icons and how they will appear at different resolutions and things like that but when they're showing these it still looks like they're on the draw persona also throughout the entire video, we can see the tools along the left. They look very, very similar to the desktop version of Designer. Looks like they consolidated shapes, but it's hard to tell if anything else is really missing in there. They don't have the hand tool that lets you pan around the document and they don't have the zoom tool, but you can do all that with hand gestures on the iPad. So that makes sense that they'd pull those out. Also, I want to apologize in advance for showing my face so much in this video and not the other video. I just don't want to get dinged by the uh, YouTube copyright police. Maybe I'll animate some like dramatic recreations instead. The video also spends a lot of time showing off some of the flashier features. There's some split screen comparison controlled by touch that's really smooth. They showed off some of the designer's cool morphy wonky vector reflection special effecty things. And the zoom is working well. They zoom in over and over and over again. It looks buttery smooth, looks really good. This is the kind of thing they always show off when they're demoing the software to people, but it's funny because this isn't the kind of thing that I'm looking for in an iPad vector app. I've used so many vector iPad apps over the last few years, and there's some that are okay there are some that are really bad, but for the most part, uh, the, the biggest problem I have with them is that they are very, very slow to use. Like they react quickly, but when I'm using them, I'm only at about like 25% efficiency compared to using a, a, like Illustrator or Designer on the desktop. So really the main thing I'm looking for in an iPad vector app is to get up to like, I don't know, 75% of the speed that I have on the desktop. Competence, that's what I'm looking for in a vector app. I'm looking for competence, like the special effects those are icing on the cake. The biggest change I see to the interface are these right side icons. To make more room on the screen to draw on, these are collapsible tools. It works a lot like Affinity Photo on the iPad where the menus collapse to save space and expand as you need them. Several times they show how this side interface will work and it looks just like Affinity Photo. They did show the brushes. This was kind of cool. Probably also means you can import brushes from the desktop app into the iPad app. That's really awesome. I know the desktop app can also import ABR fi files, which are Photoshop brush files. That is really cool. So I wouldn't be surprised if you could see uh, Photoshop brush files also being imported onto the iPad app. As expected, you can resize, rotate things. The cool part here is that the anchor points look really big. Not surprised, but I love that. It might not seem like a big deal, but if you're using your finger or the Apple Pencil to manipulate things and move things around, grab the correct layer, that actually is a huge deal. Overall, just looking through the demo, everything looked really responsive. It looked like the person who was doing the demo knew what they were doing and was they were grabbing the thing they wanted to grab. They were doing the thing they wanted to do. They weren't doing a lot of undoing. That was really good to see. So I've talked about it mostly as a drawing vectory app, but it's also used by a lot of people for designs, layouts, interface layouts. So you could definitely use it as just kind of a traditional layout graphic design type app. I spent most of my career as a graphic designer slash web designer. So I have been asked quite a bit in the last few years, hey, 
what's on the iPad for graphic designers? And the answer is kind of like, eh, not a whole lot. Now I haven't done a deep dive into graphic design applications, but the ones that I have checked out seem like they're more template based, like this idea of like, let's help you quickly get a layout together as opposed to let's start from scratch. And the ones that do start from scratch just seem a little too simplistic. The one caveat here when you're designing or doing anything is, is, is fonts kind of a pain in the butt on the iPad to, to download fonts and get them installed, especially if they're zipped up because you gotta move them to some other file folder and then unzip them. And and plus you need a third party app to do it. So uh, it's, ugh. it's it's not fun. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. This is about Affinity Designer. Uh, to wrap this up, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm thinking it's looking really good. It's really great to see a no compromises app coming to the iPad. Now, the one thing we don't know is, is it iPad Pro only? Will it work on older iPads? Things like that. My guess would be that it's probably catered towards the iPad Pro. Affinity Photo, when it came out, was sold pretty heavily as an iPad Pro app, but I know it did work on some of the newer iPads as well. So, do you have the opportunity to watch the video yet? If you have, and if you have any questions, or if I missed anything that you think looks really, really cool, let me know down below in the comments. That's all I've got for today. I guess I'm gonna see you guys in a couple of days.